Hey, Simeon here. In today's video, I'm going to talk with you guys about hay and mineral content in the hay and the issues that arise with livestock, um, issues that we have here on the farm where I'm at right now. And I'm also going to show you some vlogging from our family. Hope you enjoy this video. Winter has finally come. Uh, it's still not a lot of snow for this area, but it has been snowing on and off for um, the last days now and it's gonna continue. And the kids are loving it, really enjoying it. And let me tell you and show you, the landscape is absolutely stunning. So we just hiked up the mountain a little bit. Tiny bit. Yeah, where well, they took down the logs, but it's beautiful here. Very pretty view. Yeah. A little bit of snow on the ground, not too much. Yeah, but the trees are gorgeous. Yeah. Our last winters in Sweden had been so mild, we didn't really have much of this. Yeah. No, we're definitely enjoying it. The kids are building a, um, have built a little tunnel in the snow. We're still digging this out. We So you haven't broken through yet? No, we have. You have? Yeah, I couldn't hear you at all talking in there. Okay. They're digging out right now and it's good for them to have something to do. A few more inches of snow and they yeah. and they go outside and they're excited again. So Yeah, they love it. They've been waiting. It was really hard for them, the mild weather we had here. Well, they loved it, but then at some point they're like, this is supposed to be winter. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let me turn around the camera for you guys and show you what it is we are looking at here. That's it. Beautiful snow-covered mountain and some 500 meters down into the valley. That's pretty high mountain. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Beautiful. Gosh, it's like everywhere you look here, there's another peak to look at. Over here too, yeah. Beautiful. And then this mountain here, you can't see that now at all, but it goes up, you know, another 1,500 meters. And then over there you have a glacier at over 3,000 meter. One of the main issues with livestock in general is that they are malnourished when it comes to minerals. It's not just enough to let them graze, it's not just enough to feed them hay, or silage or something, but you need to make sure that they get enough minerals. Now, there are people who have their feet tested and that might be important when you go into cheese making and into dairy and everything, but in general, we can see and know how the animals are doing on the outside of the animal. We don't have to take a look inside the animal, but we can see on the outside of the animal in general how they're doing. If they're doing well, it will show. If they're not, it'll also show. When you give livestock access to minerals at free choice, which I highly support, then you will also see what they choose and how much they choose. And it is different from day to day based on their diet from the field, but also their needs. Um, if they go into heat, if they are having a calf, if the calf is nursing and so on. But I don't want to talk about all of that so much. I want to more talk about um, haying the mineral cycle and the effect on the winter feed. So as you can see here behind me, we have hay here and we have another type of hay there. This is hay that's being harvested in June for the first harvest here on the mountainside. This is a second harvest, extremely fine stuff that's harvested on the southern slope later in August. It's extremely fine and you would think extremely high quality. Even this you would say extremely high quality. This year, it's the second cut of hay. It is extremely fine. It would be perfect for feeding deer or sheep, lambs especially. However, the lengths of this grass, this these plants didn't even regenerate before it was cut. So much like overgrazing, you caused this field to get weakened. And because of a broken mineral cycle, 
the content of this grass is very, very low. Yes, you have other benefits from the herbs, but it's not enough to keep the cow healthy. We feed three types of hay here on the farm, the farmer does, and it is these two types, but then also hay that we buy in from just a conventional farmer down in the valley who who produces hay like most farmers do, big machinery, field, um, and, and you know, probably seed it every few years. I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, and here's the interesting thing. This is more like herbal hay with lots of wildflowers and 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 a high variety of plants, which in general is really good. But and this is very interesting. They like the fine stuff the least. They like this okayish, and they eat the hay from the conventional farmer the most. If you give them this in the feeder now, that they will not touch it. I'm right now mixing the two um, cuts together. Now here's the reason why. And I'm going to show you on the cattle downstairs in a little bit. Okay, let me say it this way. I'm pretty certain that this is it based on what I see on the cattle. I have not done a scientific analysis of this in a lab or something, but based on the observation skills on the cattle, what I see, this is my conclusion. First of all, the cows know what's good for them and what's not and what they like more. Generally, animals like finer feed. So why do they not like this? And I believe you can look at the cattle and know and see that they are not getting the minerals that they need. This hay here is cut from the same place year after year after year. That all leads to not just um, the deterioration of the soil and the land, but also to hay with a low nutrient and mineral input and quality. And so that is why I am convinced these cows like the hay you buy from the farmer down there. Not that his fields are healthy or good, I'm not saying that, but his hay has a higher mineral content and nutrient content, and the cows choose that always over this hay. Okay, we're gonna get a delivery here very soon. But the issue is that they don't touch this, they don't like it so much, they eat the other hay from the conventional farmer, even though this is herbal hay from the mountainside, um, not treated. And guys, year after year, year it's being hayed. Year after year, the biomass, the nutrients, everything is being removed from the land. It's on the slope. You can't spread manure there. It gets poorer and poorer. Yes, you get a lot of wildflowers. Yes, you get a high diversity of plants. But you can also get that in a holistically managed grazing system. By haying, you create poor soil life. It dries out. The mineral cycle, the water cycle, the energy flow are all very ineffective and impacted in a bad way. And so it shows that our cows don't like the hay. They don't eat it as much. They don't get the minerals, I believe. And I'm going to show you now on the cows how that looks. Hey guys, don't forget tomorrow, Saturday, January 20th, we're going to have another Sound Farmer live stream. We're going to be talking about how to deal with emergencies and catastrophes that can happen in your life, in your farming journey. Uh, things that you couldn't plan for. Part of this is going to be straight derived from holistic management. It's going to be very helpful if you're interested. Make sure you click the notification sign on the scheduled live stream. So one thing that you can tell from these cows, especially if you know Highlanders very much, these guys do not have very shiny and slick fur. If you compare that, I don't, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but if you compare that to the Highlanders that I used to raise in Sweden, it was just very, very different. Um, these cows also sweat a lot. Um, even when it's dry outside, they often come into the stable um, a little bit wet, which is really weird to me. I'm still looking into really why that is with the climate and everything. But also here in the stable, with fairly good ventilation, doors opens and all that, they still sweat a lot. This is now from snow and ice that was on them a little bit from the night. But you can tell the fur is not very slick. And especially on the calves, they look very shaggy. And these are all signs that they don't have that good of a mineral balance. And we are going to do something about that. All these calves look a little bit shaggy to me. Now, Highlanders, you might say, always do that. But there's a difference between, you know, having long fur. This one looks okay to me. But if you look at the other ones, um, that's not how they should look. And they don't have this shiny 
and a little bit oily, greasy fur. None of them do. That's not very good. And we're going to do something about it. Now you see they have mineral stones here. But um, I don't know what you think about mineral stones. I'm quite skeptical to them. Okay, let's go. Let's go out. Come on. Hey, let's go out. Ah, you silly. So this is where the calves are in. You see, there's some loose-ish manure here. But quite often you see a whole spot here uh, where it's just really running out diarrhea. Not good. So these are my observations. And you can see on the outside of the cow... Um, pretty much if it's healthy on the inside. That's that's a very smart and pragmatic approach um, that you can see the health of your herd. Now, I see this in all of the animals and not just on individuals that you would just call from the herd. So what are we going to do about it? I'm going to be looking into a different supplemental feed um, for minerals for these cows. Kelp is ideal because it has the minerals very well naturally balanced for the animals but it's not always easily available and it can be very expensive generally you can find kelp for people who have horses um, because people with horses care more about generally um, just the health and nutrition that their animals get that's what we're going to do we're going to renew their um, mineral stones their salt stones and also we're going to get this delivery of the hay from the neighbor and we're going to mix all the hay because they will attack that hay and eat it so much better and so much more and um, we'll make that available. I have started to feed some straw or give access to straw to the calf, which seems to have improved. Maybe that manure that we saw there from the calf had already improved because I gave them hay and the option of eating that. I am really suggesting to anyone that you offer your cattle a variety of feed. Now, if you don't graze year round, if you don't have a very diverse pasture system with a, a, a great diversity of plants, you need to be able in the stable or a, also a supplementary feed to really offer them different kinds of feed so that they can balance their diet. Let me tell you that the, the way that cattle balance their diet is so highly complex. It's, it's more complex than we can ever understand. And we need to give them the option to choose from things themselves. So do this test, you know, put some silage, put hay of different qualities, um, put some kelp next to it, put some straw there, put maybe some straw from a conventional farmer, some from an organic farmer. I don't care. Run these tests, see what the animals choose and how it'll be. One way I can also tell that they need minerals is they go and eat on the bark and of the trees and the and the needles of the trees, especially trees that animals normally don't like as much, like spruce, for example. They go for that and they are just crazy about the hay dust, the fine stuff that falls off. Now, all of that is normal. Animals nibble on that, animals eat that, but they are also signs of animals needing some extra nutrients and some extra minerals. Now, all those things that I just mentioned, important to notice, they are just treating symptoms. They're not treating the cause. The cause, the root cause of this is this really intensive haying twice a year, breaking the mineral cycle on the land and creating a feed that is too low in minerals. So what would you have to do on your land? It is to make sure that you're educated in holistic management, understand the ecosystem processes as we teach them in holistic management, and then understand how your land should look and how an effective mineral cycle works. And we need to restore the mineral cycle on land like this so that we have a healthier soil life, and healthier ecosystem processes on the land, which leads to healthier livestock. And you can use your livestock to improve and accelerate the mineral cycle. And that's for another video. By the way, check out our new website, thesoundfarmer.net. And um, you can find lots of resources there, holistic management, that I teach. I created a course, low price for anybody who wants to get into holistic management. Check it out.